Jason, I feel like we're learning so much. I'm not going to make it. So much about life and the boundaries of the human spirit. <laughs> it's going to be all right, buddy. Oh, It's going to be all right. I found, I found a bar, finally. Uh-huh. At the end of day two, I found a bar. In the convention in center? In the convention center. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I walked up, and the guy in front of me ordered a shot of cheap tequila, and it was $10. And I was like, you sons of bitches. I swear, the, uh, day one, I posted a picture um, and I said, it's just like being in Disneyland. And it was, a uh, it was the sign they have that I'm sure you walked past. It was that. like cheeseburger and fries, only 1650. And it yeah. was like, R- really? I just wanted to start turning over tables and screaming, this cafe is out of order. <laughs> this whole convention is out of order. <laughs> um, well, welcome everybody to Rage Select. I am Jeff. I'm Jason. And this is day two, right? We could, we called the first one day zero. It, so. Feels like Day Z. Day Z? At this point. Well, there yes. were zombies walking around in the convention center. I may very well be one of them. Oh, yeah? This is kicking my ass. Is that where the real zompocalypse starts? Is, is just convention going folk? Yeah, it's convention going folk pushing themselves past the limits of normal, uh, human standards and also contracting viruses that are probably getting passed around just like, herpes at the the boy scouts yeah i i really feel wait that no go ahead i'm sorry <laughs> i really feel at some point like you need to be walking in with the the walter white suit on oh you know god just the breath the, the breath thing and the face cover i saw some uh asian dude i don't know if this is a racist or a stereotype or what it is but i saw some asian dude walking around with the medical mask on today it, yeah well no i saw i saw several like that mm-hmm. and yeah they were all Asian. Yeah. So either they're really courteous or really paranoid. Right. I don't know if they're trying to keep stuff in or keep stuff out. And also, before we start, I'd just like to say, um, citizens of Los Angeles, you got a lot of mentally ill people on your streets. This is crazy central. Dude. Like, we're walking around. I thought I saw some dude steal another dude's shopping cart on yeah. our way back from the... They just, oh. He just jacked it. Right. He just walked up and pressed triangle and jacked that dude's cart. And I couldn't tell whether the guy, the old man, or the, the homeless Santa that was chasing him was, like, yelling at him to stop. Or <laughs> yeah. They were having some really weird conversation. Yeah. Yesterday, we had that dude calling me master with the cigarettes. Yeah, and we got, that, that was something. Whew. When that dude jacked that cart, uh, the look on Jeff's face was like, shit's going down, shit's going down, well, shit's going I, yeah, down. Yeah, it was, it was. I was, I couldn't tell. I was like, oh God, is, is Hobo Santa and that other dude, are they going to have a, a bum fight right here in the streets? God, I had my camera on me. That would have been awesome. Did you, did you see that like in his cart though, he had like one of those pink boxes that had, Gwyneth Paltrow's head. Well, no, the, tra- the traditionally has like a dozen donuts in oh, it or whatever. <laughs> uh, it was, it was weird, you guys. Anyway, that's the streets of LA. It was just full of buttons and like crayons. <laughs> Who even knows? I feel like sometimes like we should just interview the crazy people out on the streets of Hell LA. Yeah. Have a We're- whole new video segment. Everywhere we went. Mm-hmm. Everywhere. Most of them were in the convention center. <laughs> I did see a guy in the convention center wearing a, a high Mario t-shirt, like Mario with bloodshot eyes and like a stupid expression on his face. Oh, pot culture. Yep. All right. Well, let's, uh, we got a lot to get through today. So without further ado, let's go ahead and launch directly into day two. And I think, Jason, that you should be the one to go first because you filled in a pretty glaring uh, omission that we had yesterday, which was the Nintendo booth. I went in there and I was, yeah, this morning and I was just like, Nintendo, this is your morning. I'm going to leave the money on the dresser. You're my bitch. And, uh, of course I went straight to Mario Kart 8. Yeah. Uh, and I'm probably going to say this quite a bit, yeah. uh, about various things, but it's a Mario Kart game. Uh huh. Uh, I got to play a race holding the, the Wii wheel, which I was never good at. But it's yeah. a it's a Wii U game though, right? It is a Wii U. So you were U playing game. it with you were playing multiplayer. Yeah, it was split screen. This one dude was using the 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 Wii U remote thing as as the wheel, mm-hmm. tilting it left and right, and I was using the actual wheel, turning that left and right, and and I just I just got my ass handed to me. Well, it was it, humiliating, and I if I had had a sword, I would have fallen on it. <laughs> in the well, in the trailer from the Nintendo Direct, it seems like the new thing. In this particular version, is that you got like magnet wheels? Yeah, magnet. So you go like upside down and on I didn't walls see any and stuff. Of that. Really? I didn't see any of that. Really? Yeah. I played like a Bowser's Castle thing. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I didn't see any of that. But they've got the glider back and the underwater things from the last one from Seven. Motorcycles. Motorcycles from the Wii U. Yeah, or the Wii version, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So you know, it's it's. Uh, 
I don't know. This whole, you know, I love this franchise, but it's starting to wear thin. It's just like, all right, like, let's do it again. Yeah. All right. D- why don't you just keep going? Keep going? We, like, yeah, we'll just oh, knock out some, some Nintendo stuff. Okay, I'll I played uh, New Super Luigi U, which is a DLC to... Some... New Super Mario Brothers U. That one, yeah. yes. I thought and, it was funny uh, because you told me that, and I was like, that's that's DLC. I didn't even know it was DLC. <laughs> they didn't tell me. They didn't preface it as that. But uh, yeah, you play as Luigi the whole time. And then, I mean, it's a side scroll in Mario game, you know? Does he but, does he bitch and complain about having to be the, the butthole child of the oh, Mario family? Every time. Like when he when he caps the flag. Yeah. When he caps the flag, he's like, suck it, you overbearing cock! Well, wait, did you play multiplayer with other people? No, no, no. It was just me. Oh. You, you can only... Uh, you, you can't play as Mario on this. Uh-huh. You're, you're just Luigi. And he jumps higher and moves a little faster. Wait, do the, is there not even is there a multiplayer mode in this? Uh, I don't know. Not that you saw. Not that I saw. Oh, because yeah. I'm like, I'm like thinking we've had so much practice in griefing people. <laughs> yeah. at New Super Mario Brothers oh. U that like you could have just made somebody at the Nintendo booth throw a Wii controller <laughs> through yes, a television. Exactly. <laughs> do you know who I am? <laughs> I am the Holy Murph. <laughs> Actually, it looks like there is multiplayer. Oh, okay. You got two toads, and then that. You remember that crazy rabbit head guy or whatever? Oh, I seem yeah. to remember that from the trailer. Yeah. I could be wrong about that, but this these Nintendo had the biggest proliferation of booth babes, and a lot of them knew fuck all about what was going on. Oh yeah, oh yeah. They're very nice, lovely young women. Yeah, they are there essentially to make sure that you put that strap around your wrist when you have a Wii Mote. Exactly. They were very insistent on that. I was yes. just like. They just take my first rodeo. I know how to how to hold a re- Wiimote. And, nope. And she was just like, I'm pretty sure they put it on, <laughs> put it on. I'm pretty sure they they take those poor women into a room before they they start. And they go, if any remote touches any TV for any reason, <laughs> you're dead. Your life you, is forfeit. Yeah, you have to answer directly to Mario. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they cart Mario. <laughs> they go back and Mario's in a room sitting at a table with a single glaring light overhead, and he's just smoking a cigar, and he's like. Sit down. You, 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 it's, it's okay. Uh, it's a me, a Mario. And then he's, it, yeah, he just looks at it. He goes, so, you dumb cunt. What the fuck are you thinking? I just, I'm getting, I'm getting these, this weird mental image of Mario doing the stuff, uh, Joe Pesci in Casino. He's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, Jessica, I got your head in a fucking vice. <laughs> Is this a your tanuki suit? <laughs> Is this a your tanuki suit? <laughs> but, yeah, so it played. You're saying I, that I, it was. I, I want. I wanted. I want to go up to one of the 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 booth dudes uh-huh. and have him put the strap on my wrist and just slow go slow. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Get it on there. Nice okay. So and tight. if if I I didn't I haven't been to the Nintendo booth, but are the uh, make quote fingers here booth babes? They're wearing like a white polo shirt with a Nintendo logo and like gray shorts. Oh, no, they were like wearing that. like black shirts uh, and and black shorts, but they were all wearing uh, Mario, Luigi, or Link hats. Oh, really? Yeah. It's it's sometimes Nintendo. You just get a little bit too precious for me, and I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, dude. I mean, like ever at the Sony booth, I saw Parappa the Rappa walking around being a dumbass to people, and I was like, okay, that's fine, but. I should have challenged him to a rap battle. Oh yeah, I'm gonna do it. You take the mic to don't you? You better not drop my microphones. These <laughs> microphones are my. I love my microphones, Jason. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna fucking burn him in a rap battle, mm-hmm. and then I'm gonna drop the mic. I'm gonna go up and be like, "Hey man, don't tell Jeff that I did that because I will be in <laughs> shit tons of trouble." There's no strap on this mic. I, I know. There's how no, are you? I need somebody to put the strap on how, the mic. How are you not gonna throw it through a television accidentally? <laughs> yeah. Did you? Okay, so I told you about this before. This is a quick aside. We're talking about dropping the mic. Did you see this nonsense on Spike where they handed Jack Tretton a mic and they said that like you had the, your conference yesterday, but the one thing you didn't do was drop the mic and walk off stage. So here's a microphone. We want you to drop it and then walk away from this interview. And Jack Tretton apparently has no idea about dropping the mic and then walking off stage. So he just took it and like threw it behind him. That's, that's baller. Yeah. He could, he could have done whatever he wanted. He could have been like, Major Nelson, come over here. I'm going to stick this right in your dick hole. <laughs> you should have thrown it just right at the camera. Yeah. No, no, he should have hit, he should have hit Jeff Keeley in the head with it and walked out. <laughs> that is a baller move. That right would have kicked ass. And then he puts on his, his sunglasses and rides off in a limo with Psy. <laughs> so was this the one where you get in? Bumped when you were at the booth when you're playing Super no, Mario Brothers. No, we'll, we'll, we'll we come back to that. that. Okay, yeah. all right. Then I played uh, Super Mario 3D World, which mm-hmm. was it was fun. You know, I played in a cat suit and 
then I was I started. Uh, you What's know, the, a cat suit like? Uh, it, the cat suit, yeah, you get to climb up walls. And wait, you, who did you play as? Uh, I played as Toad, actually. Oh yeah, because they're bringing back the thing from uh, like uh, Super Mario Bros. Uh, two. Yeah, yeah, Float everybody, Princess. Yeah, Toad is the fastest. Mm-hmm. Princess floats a little, etc. So yeah, uh, they each have their own ability. I played as Toad. And, uh, Did you play with anybody else or just by yourself? Just by myself. Uh, and then I got the cat suit and, you know, ran up walls and clawed at stuff. And you know, yeah, it was, it was ridiculously precious. You and kill a bird and leave it for the princess somewhere. Or... <laughs> exactly. Well, I, was, I started Did... fucking with the booth, babe. And, and she was like, now the cat suit. And I was like, I know I have one of these. <laughs> She's like, oh, you have one? Is it pink? Is it striped? What am I? I was about to say, what am I queer? <laughs> but I stopped myself. And I was like, is it pink? This is not a playthrough. <laughs> Rage select Jason. <laughs> I'm not from the Bronx. Of course, it's not pink, lady. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you know, the Super Mario, the Super Mario 3D Land on the 3DS was actually one of the more interesting Mario games that I played in the last, say, yeah. five years. Yeah. So this seems to be kind of expanding on a little bit. It was a Wii U game. Uh, yeah, it was Wii U, and you can use the. You can. What do you do on this thing? Uh, the, the only thing that she showed me that I did uh-huh. uh, was to if you tap the camera. You can tilt the Wii U to get like different views and perspectives and stuff like that. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it probably does the thing where you can hold extra items in there and stuff like that, but I never did use it very much. It, it, yeah. So, uh, and then, uh, I did, uh, Sonic the Lost World. Okay. Which was, again, it was a Sonic game. Yeah. Uh, it was, you know, running. Well, okay. No, wait, wait. Well, wait. it was a 3D Sonic game. There, okay. Yeah. yeah. You need to specify with yeah, Sonic. Yeah. It was a 3D <laughs> Sonic game. It was fun. It was frenetic. You know, I never did see uh, uh, knuckles or tails or anything like that, but I was just, you know, running along these pillars and it's very gravity defying because you run along these like columns and you can, you can kind of, you know, traverse them in three dimensions. You know what I mean? So like go uh, upside down, like yeah. go around them. Yeah. And, uh, and then, you know, you, you hit the little bumpers and it bounces you all around and stuff like that. A good sense of speed. That's really very much all, so all you want out of it, a Sonic it does, game. It does, it, it does have a great sense of speed. Did it get out of control? Did you go, whoa, 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 did it seem like a good video game? Yeah, it was fun. Okay. It was okay. fun. It was very arcadey. I liked it. Okay. Cool. Well, uh, you know what? We're getting, we're getting down to the middle of your list. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about a few of the things on my list real fast and we can come back to that next one. So the first thing that I played today was this, uh, I don't really know how to say this word, Jason. I, that's never stopped us. Uh, ya- Yaiba Ninja, Ninja Gaiden Z. Yeah. Um, which, way to go, Japan, for giving us, <laughs> us Westerners, us dumb Westerners, difficult names. Well, yeah. This, this is weird. This is a weird game. I've read some <laughs> I'm, like. Oh, I'm sorry. You were expecting something else from Ninja Gaiden? <laughs> well, this is weirder than Ninja Gaiden. This is, okay, what is it? Uh, oh, it's a, uh, uh, K, K, KJ Inafune joint, the guy that made Mega Man. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, so this is, Ninja Gaiden has nothing to do... It doesn't seem to have... Well, okay. I'm just going to describe what happened. You start the game, <laughs> okay. and there was like this... It's all in that kind of hyper cell shaded stuff, like Killer is Dead that you were talking about, or No More Heroes, or that stuff, where it's yeah. very hard lines, very hard cell shading. Um, and it starts out with a guy who's kind of dressed like in the blue Ninja Gaiden uniform, which was, was Ryu, Ryu, Ryu Hayabusa, yeah. right? Right. Okay. But this guy is like... From the original, yeah. <sighs> but see, Ryu Hayabusa, he's like the main character in the new in Ninja the new Gaiden as games. well, yeah. So this guy's kind of dressed like that, but he's got an open, like he doesn't have a mask on, so his face is out in the open, and his blue outfit's kind of ripped up, and he's talking a lot of shit, and he's just like out in the wilderness, and then Ryu Hayabusa shows up, and they start having a ninja battle. And like during what the happens, well, yeah, two ninjas meet each other in the wilderness. It's going to be a battle, exactly. So, uh, but then it was it was kind of weird that we're, we're like. This blue ninja guy was talking a lot of shit. Mm-hmm. Like, Ryu Hayabusa was dressed in his Ninja Gaiden Sigma outfit, mm-hmm. and he was like, oh, you're a big fan of bondage? Like, well, you you need a ball gag for that outfit or stuff? Your mama's so fat, she sits on the rainbow yeah, and skittles. Yeah, like, and it was, it was that kind of, like, Japanese version of shit-talking where yeah. it's a little bit too shit-talky so that it comes off as... um as kind of just like cheesy. <laughs> right. So then in the, at the end of this battle, Ryu like chops this dude from collarbone to, uh, kidney on one side. And then, you know, the big gout of blood comes out. Then they skip forward 
And this dude is now like cyborg ninja. Like he's got a robot arm and he's got half a robot face and he's got a robot junk on him. And he is in a city that is just full of zombies, mm-hmm. which is where the Z apparently in Ninja Gaiden Z comes in. From there, you have a fairly traditional third person action game. It was definitely not as hard as Ninja Gaiden, like Sigma or Sigma 2 or Black or any of that stuff. <laughs> That's going to make a lot of people real happy. Well, uh, yeah. And, and by I, that, I mean people are going to lose their shit angry. <laughs> I think they already are losing their shit. Um, but I don't know. It could get harder later. Like what I found was just a bunch of zombies that were pretty easy to kill. There was like a regular slash and there was like, like a, a punch button that you could punch or you could like pick up zombies' arms like nunchucks. But when you pick them up, they called them numb. Chucks, N U M B, C H U C K S, two separate words. Like, okay. there was a lot of this kind of weird, grindhousey humor, over the top stuff. I can't tell if it worked or not. <laughs> like, there was one part where you, there was a, a there was like a, a sex shop, right? And it was a building, and there were giant legs, lady legs coming out of the top of it, so that, like, where the building was was essentially where the VJJ would be located. And you have to take this zombie and you throw him into a truck. And when he gets in the truck, he's like, and he steps on the gas pedal. And he drives this truck directly between this building's legs and it blows yep. up. And it was like, it's that kind of humor. Kind of lollipop chainsaw. Okay. Kind of over the top stuff. Like there's one point where there was one part that did make me chuckle where you throw a, you tried to knock this wall down and you throw a zombie into a steamroller and he just, he puts the thing in gear and he starts driving it forward. And then another zombie walks in front of it and they have this weird cut back and forth where the zombie, the steamroller is trying to motion the other zombie out of the way. He's like, ah, ah. he's like waving his hand, trying to get the other zombie out of the way. And the other zombie is too stupid to do it. And then they run over him. Kind of juvenile esque humor. The, there was no like, it was striking to me that this game didn't have any way to use the right analog stick. So it wasn't like God of War dodge and it wasn't camera control. It was fixed camera angles. And there was some definitely some platforming in it. I have really no idea what to make of this. Like it seems like a decent enough game, but it seems like it's just going to piss off everybody who's a fan of Ninja Gaiden because they like the really yeah. hard games. And then it doesn't seem like it seems like it's going to be too juvenile to appeal to the people who might be wanting to pick up a more lightweight ninja game because they're going to go, this humor is kind of garbage. I don't right. know. Maybe it's just made, maybe it's made to, uh, to appeal to people when you say to somebody, Hey, there's this new game and it's got a cyborg ninja and they're like, Oh, bro, I love cyborg ninjas. And it's like, yeah. the humor is very crude. Oh, there's boobs and there's you know, terrible blood everywhere. Okay. Maybe that's who it's for. Uh, so that was what I started the day off with, which was inauspicious to say the, <laughs> say the least. But from there, I saw what... I'm excited about this one. <sighs> this may be the best thing I've seen in all of E3. Oh, really? Yeah. Like a bold statement. I mean, and I saw... I'm going to tell you right now. I saw Dark Souls 2 today. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. we'll come back Which, to that. I know you wanted to pull your dick out and lay it on the table, but mm, you didn't. No. Proverbial. Proverbial dick. Well, oh, yeah. Well, well yeah. Well, there's Not that the part. the real thing. Yeah. Weirdo. I thought you were. I thought you were, Jason. I thought you were insinuating that I wanted to masturbate while playing Dark Souls. To which I would reply, "I could do that in the privacy of my own home." You can't masturbate and play Dark Souls at the same time. It simply requires too much concentration. <laughs> so if you want to come over and jerk off Jeff while he's playing Dark Souls, and his address, a, <laughs> you're a very l- lovely lady and not some dude. I don't want. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, lovely lady. We've covered this. Don't get me started. Okay. <laughs> the Witcher Three: The Wild yeah. Hunt. This thing was in pre-alpha when I saw it. It's not even coming out until next year. But pre-alpha. Pre-alpha. Uh, but holy shit, this game was awesome. So you you played Witcher 2, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, played, I really liked it. Didn't I never spent enough time with it, but I really liked it. I never played Witcher 1, but... Uh, so this started with a, a trailer, a CGI trailer that they made for it that I encourage everybody to go check out because it's fucking awesome, where Geralt and I think another Witcher come back from a hunt and they get paid by these these uh, like government officials who are in the act of trying to rape and hang a woman. Whoa! And then the other guy is like, oh, "This isn't our business. We hunt monsters." And then they get a little bit down the road, and Geralt is like, "There's you know sometimes monsters look like men or something like that." And then jumps off his horse, oh, and just damn. fucking like 
tears the shit out of those dudes. <laughs> yeah. The whole thing ends with the leader of them like standing on top of a bucket with his head in the noose, his hands tied behind his back with a woman standing next to him, and they're just like, all right, bye. <laughs> uh, but from there, the biggest change in The Ger- Witcher Geralt's 2. Geralt's a women's rights advocate, by uh, the way. Geralt's a weird dude. Also likes fucking him, as we as noted in Witcher 2. Yes. Well, it's it, I didn't... I had to run from there to Dark Souls uh, because I only had a few minutes to get to from the one meeting to open the other. Open world. But yes, this is open world. Oh, I was going to say is I didn't see Triss anywhere in oh, the yeah. in the demo and because it's possible for Triss to not be with you at the end of The Witcher 2, right. I wonder if they're going to have an import function for that to take your 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 choices back over. Um but the biggest change in this is, like you just said, it is all open world. And you can go, they start out by horse, walking around through the forest. They go up to this castle and they talk to this guy. And then from there, they go down. And one of their big new things is they have a uh, naval traversal. So you get in a boat, you drive your boat around. They talk about how, like, it's a clear and sunny day today, but if the seas are choppy, uh, you will get thrown out of your boat or your boat will get dashed up against the rocks or, like, you can't make it run like a boat. Um they talked about a lot about how the NPCs in the game do stuff really independently of Geralt. Like you see a raiding party going out in like a they were in a Norse area. So like in this big Norse ship, a big raiding party was leaving, and they said he said if it was raining, these guys would all be in the tavern. Like those NPCs would have all been in the tavern, but because huh. it's a nice day, they went out and got on their boat to go raid and plunder. Huh. Uh, That's pretty so, slick. Yeah. So then they they there's a fast travel system. They warped out. It looks like they've really cleaned up. First of all, the, the graphics are gorgeous. I mean, Witcher 2 was gorgeous, but this was even more gorgeous. Um, they show, and this is next gen. This, I, I'm not entirely certain about that. Hold on. Let's, let's look Might it up. Have, okay. Uh, I, I, I know, I can tell you right now that it was running on a high end PC. I can tell just from yeah. the frame rate and the way that it looked, but, uh, yes. Okay. Windows, Xbox One, PS4. Okay. Yes, it is. Uh, looks fantastic. Like, Imagine if Skyrim, you know, Skyrim looks a little rough on the consoles in sure. places when you can't turn up the detail level and everything. This was like if you had it on the, a really good PC with a bunch of mods and stuff installed. Um, so they showed some of the open world. They showed going out and finding, uh, tra- just tracking a monster, like finding a monster in the wilderness. And this was a giant monster that was in a, uh, like a ruined castle. And they said that like monsters have layers where they like to hang out. Like this guy likes to be in that castle because his attacks are charge attacks, and it's easier if he can box you into that area. So they tried to lure him out in order to get him outside. But then they went to this little village to progress the Wild Hunt storyline, and they did this monster hunt quest where the local village asks you to hunt down this monster that half of them, well, half of them think this monster is a god, and they want to keep worshiping, and the other half wants you to go take him out. I described the process to you, and we're already going long on this one. So needless to say... It's more than just like go to here and kill everybody in this yeah, area. First, yeah. you have to like get clues to figure out what kind of monster you're dealing with. There are tough decisions. Then there's decisions to be made about what you do, what you advise the villagers to do. You have to and go how out. That may or may not affect you later. Right, right. You have to go out uh, and you have to basically lure the monster out by destroying these totems. And the monster comes out and he brings by these wolves with him. Just all kinds of awesome shit. Like I honestly think that this game. With, um, but you know what? I also talked to somebody about, uh, Elder Scrolls, but we'll come back to that tomorrow because you get to see it, you lucky bastard. But this reminded me a lot of Skyrim, of having a giant open world where they were talking about, like, we tried to put things to catch your attention. They call them points of interest. Yeah. Like, everywhere in the world, they want to put, like, hey, there's some ruins. Hey, look at that weird tree over there. Oh, look, there's a house on that rock out in the bay. You know, I love that stuff. That, that, that's some of my favorite stuff in open world games. Yeah, that is all full of things for Geralt to do. And one of the things, the only problems that I had with The Witcher 2 was that the areas were big, but they were still very constrained. Yeah. And you could wear them out pretty quickly. Whereas here, they showed this giant island, and they made it sound like this was just one of a bunch of different places in the game. And this one island was like 30 times as big as... The entire Witcher 2 game. Sweet. So this one is one to watch. And they also tried to give me a 1,500-piece puzzle. But I didn't, <laughs> I didn't want to carry it around the show floor all day. <laughs> what if they had said, here's a 1,500-piece puzzle. If you can finish it in an hour, we will give you this pre-alpha copy. I would have sat down on the floor in the convention center <laughs> and failed that task. But I would have tried nonetheless. Because I'm not... Are you good at puzzles? I'm no. Not, I'm not good at puzzles. You start with the edges, right? Sure. Whatever. All right. Who does that, old people? 
actually, uh, you know, my friend Chuck Christ. Yeah. Him and his uh, fiance went through a period where they would sit around on Friday nights and do puzzles. Man, that guy is an onion. <laughs> He's a very layered individual. Yeah. Yes, that's very true. Anyway, well, let's let's come back no, to you. Do, do uh, you just did two? Do you do? You, you want me to do two. some more? Okay, yeah, do those next two, but bundle them together. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, from there, I went over to the Namco Bandai booth, and um, I saw. The, it's funny because I went up Namco. I went up to check in, and they were like, "What are you here to see?" And I was like, "Dark Souls 2. Like, wow, well, we've got you down for everything because I signed up for everything because it was the first time. Namco Bandai was one of the first booths where they sent me an email saying, hey, do you want to come look at all these games? And a lot of these games are not on the show floor. Yeah. And I was like, hell yes, I want to come look at these games. And they were like, great, we've got you signed up for <clears throat> an unannounced fighting game, which of course is Tekken because, right. you know. Um, and we've got you signed up for Dark Souls 2. And we've got you signed up for Pac-Man and the Ghostly Adventures and the new Armored Core game and a <laughs> series of mobile titles. And the whole thing is going to cause is going to be two and a half to three hours in this one room. And today I went in and I took this first meeting with these next two titles. And then I was like, uh, I have to go meet my friend. He, there's an emergency. I'm going to, when can I come Did back and look really? at Dark Souls? as an emergency yeah. excuse. Yeah. Uh, he pulled the ripcord. Yeah. I was just like, they were like, the next thing is Pac-Man and the ghostly adventures. And I was like, I don't care. I could go play something else. Literally. Anything else, and it <laughs> yeah. would be better than this. Like, have you seen the shit outside? Why am I in here? Right. Well, there's one reason. We'll, no, we'll, yeah. we'll be back to yeah. that. So, yeah, I was taken into this little room, and we talked about uh, the new Tekken Revolution and Ridge Rage, Ridge Racer Driftopia. Oh, that's another stupid name. Okay, so it would take right now. Driftopia or what's the other one that I can never remember? Uh, the, oh, drive, Drivatar. Drivatar. Driftopia yeah. or Drivatar? Oh. <sighs> What do you Drift- think? Driftopia. Rather- Driftopia. You'd rather have Driftopia? I'd rather have Driftopia. Okay. Well, these are two free-to-play Tekken and Ridge Racer games, respectively, that are at, uh, coming out on at least the PlayStation 3. I'm going to check that while I'm talking because I don't know if they're coming out elsewhere. Um, but, like, these are these are weird titles because Tekken Revolution has very little... Yeah, okay. Tekken Revolution is just the PlayStation 3. And Tekken Revolution has... um, Like, I don't want to... I don't want to stereotype here, Jason, but I feel like Japanese developers or or Pan-Asian developers, you know, have a difficult time with this whole free-to-play model. (laughs) Like, figuring out how to (laughs) implement it well. Okay, so check this out. Tekken Revolution is a free-to-play game. It has some new moves that have been added to Tekken, these like super moves that you can do where your character blurs and does a certain type of attack. A little bit of tweaking to the Tekken formula, but this is very much similar to the last Tekken game which came out, which I believe is Tekken Tag Tournament 2. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the difference here is that Tekken Revolution, you start with eight characters, and you've got online, ranked match, free play arcade play versus the computer, customization, and then one other thing. So here's the big thing. Every couple of hours, you get tokens. And these tokens are essentially... There's blue tokens and red tokens. Like Shakey's Pizza? Yes. Yeah. You can trade them in for a troll doll or an eraser, uh, or if you get enough of them, like a, a boom box. A <laughs> shot glass. Yeah. With Shakey's on it. With Shakey's on it. <laughs> no, it's... You get these coins every hour, but here's the thing. The arcade mode, when you play online with other people, it functions like an arcade game where the winner stays and the loser pays. Like if you want to play another game, you have to virtually insert another coin, and these coins regenerate over the course of of a few hours, or you can buy them for real money. Or you can call your mom, and she brings you, this is the last $5 you're getting. Right, exactly. and. Okay, so then you play this game and you get experience points that you put into one of three categories for the fighter that you're making. Yeah. One of them is basically attack, one of them is defense, and then one of them is like a critical hit damage, essentially. Okay. Um, and the defense like gives you more, like your health bar goes all the way to one side and then you get more of it come back. But then as you fight matches, you get these battle points that you can then cash in like 3,000 battle points to unlock a random other Tekken character. Okay. So say you wanted to play as Jin, right? Mm-hmm. And Jin isn't one of the first eight that are there. Yeah. So you 
spend your money, you spend your time, and you get your 3,000 points and you unlock them. There is no way to just buy the character that you want to play in Tekken. You have to keep buying these random like Mass Effect packs that open up that give you a random Tekken character. It may be the one that you want. It may be one that's totally different. And I swear to God, man, the guy in that room was spinning that shit as hard as he could. Like, <laughs> like well, so maybe you don't get the character that you want, but it'll, it'll help you to learn the other characters and hey. figure out new strategies. And it's like... Dude, you don't. Maybe you never knew you liked broccoli. Yeah, I was like, you don't know fighting game fans, do you? Because they are <laughs> not fans of that shit, right? I mean, you look it's at what's like, going on with Killer Instinct right now. Yeah, the 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 free character that uh, you unlocked is oh, it's Stephen Hawking. Congratulations. The only, I did. The only question I asked the entire time was, if you have a character and you do a random unlock. Can you unlock duplicates? And he was like, no. So there's at least that, I guess. <laughs> also, the whole thing is free. If you want to put enough time into it, you can play the whole thing for free. So eh. the other one was Rift Racer, Ridge, uh, Ridge Racer Driftopia, which is very much the same as Tekken, and it's a free-to-play Ridge Racer game. Um, the big hook with that one is that your car takes damage, and when your car gets to a certain amount of damage... You just can't use it anymore unless you apply a repair pack to it, and you get like a certain number of repair packs every day, or you can buy them from the PlayStation uh-huh. Store. I'm going to see if uh, like Geico can cover my Ridge Racer car. I think that would be a good idea. You should call them up and just have the entire conversation. Yeah, yeah. It was just, this isn't a, technically a real car. Yeah, that's not. <laughs> that, yeah, you, that's not how you start that conversation. Um, but this, I mean, both of these games look fine. Their current generation games are like PS3 games. They're both look like PS3 games. Ridge Racer looks like a, a decent enough racing game. They're putting a lot of emphasis on drifting in it, apparently, because that's what Ridge Racer is known for. Uh, Tekken seems like a pretty good version of Tekken. They're both free to play. So to me, it's the sort of thing that I was like, this is interesting, but it's not really interesting. I'd rather just pay some money. Okay, give me all of it and leave me alone. Yes. You know, that's yes. just me. Or take take the killer instinct model that we were talking about before where they've got like one character you get jago by default and you have to buy all the rest of them if the characters are 2 bucks a pop i don't have any problem buying them like one at a time and learning each one of them until i find the one that i want um i don't really don't like the idea in tekken revolution of having to randomly unlock characters especially if you had that downloaded and that was the only tekken game you had and somebody came over to your house and hey man you want to play tekken and they're like yeah sure i'm like all right here we go. And they're like, what the fuck is Heihachi? <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, I'm sorry. I just, I was trying to unlock Heihachi and I got the kangaroo guy instead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> sorry. I got the, the dude that's made of a tree. Yeah. I hate that guy. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that was, yeah, those are the first two things at my Namco Bandai experience. So let's jump back over yeah. to Nintendo. So I, I played Donkey Kong Country Tropic Freeze. And uh, basically, Vikings have invaded Donkey Kong's island, and you and Diddy Kong have to stop him. There's the cooperative play where Diddy Kong jumps on uh, Donkey Kong's shoulders, and uh, you can't throw Diddy Kong anymore. Mm. Is this now? Uh, is this Wii U or is it Wii? Uh, I was. Uh, you know what? It was Wii. It was just straight up on the Wii. Yeah, okay. it was. It was the Wii. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so you've got your. Uh, yeah, you can. You can't throw Diddy Kong anymore because apparently that was mean. Uh, what did they say that to you? That's what she said. Oh yeah. man! Yeah, I don't know if that was just political her that. political correctness gone mad. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> what do you know about ape familial <laughs> constructs? <laughs> Maybe that's completely accepted. But uh, yeah, sh- uh, you know, we we played, and uh, me and the 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 booth babe, and uh, you can yeah, you just you know you go and you collect bananas and wait wait wait. She played as Diddy Kong. She was Diddy Kong. Yeah. Why did she play as Dixie Kong? I didn't even see a Dixie Kong. I heard Dixie Returns, but yeah. she played Diddy Kong. I don't know. But she was Diddy and I was Donkey, and uh, yeah. Uh, that sounds dirty. It does. <laughs> it does. A little role-playing. I had a big red tie on. Um, you get that, that, that quote from Futurama where I was like, I know that monkey. His name is Donkey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, you know, it's uh, some some jumping puzzles. Well, it's and, retro. And uh yeah, you collect the bananas, you, you slap the ground, you can do the roll. Uh, there's a lot of uh, fun, like, underwater stuff mm-hmm. uh, where you're swimming around and you can jump up out of the water and it just looks cool. It's beautifully uh, animated. You know? Now, in the Nintendo Direct for it, um, I, I, don't remember the, I don't remember what was going on, but the, the announcer was saying, like, 
And with this new Donkey Kong Country game, we have in- instituted this new system where it'll shift the camera angles for more dynamic action. Like this is a I didn't notice. Like that. when you jump into a barrel, that sometimes you'll be shooting into a barrel that's like oh, in 3D. Yeah, I did see that with the barrels, and it's ta- it's to take you to other parts of the same level, yeah. basically. Yeah, you jump into a barrel and it shoots you into a series of barrels, but you can redirect where it shoots you. Right. So it takes you to different places, sometimes hidden levels and stuff like that. Okay. So there were there were segments with that. Uh, but as I was so, playing, oh, go go for it. As I was playing. Somebody kept bumping into me, you know, mm-hmm. and it's a crowded place, so I just shrugged it off. But they just kept bumping into me like more and more aggressively. So I was having to get closer and closer to the game, and I was getting irritated, and it just kept happening. And um, the woman playing with me was like, "Oh, I'm sorry about this." I'm like, "Yeah, whatever. It's not your fault." Yeah. But I just kept getting more and more irritated. Finally, when I finished playing, I mean, they just kept bumping me, mm-hmm. at, like kind of hard, and I turned around. And I was about to say, what the fuck, man? Yeah. I turned around. I was like, what the? That's Conan O'Brien. Okay. It was Conan O'Brien who was bumping into me. So did you punch him in the face? I threw down. Yeah. Mick to Mick. (laughs) We just, he won't be making it to the show. Okay. That way. You slap him, slap him with a Wii controller until he can't see straight. I, I slapped the red right off of his head, but. Yeah, no, he, he was there and I was like, oh, and he, it was because he was getting mobbed mm-hmm. by people with cameras. Did he and apologize he, to bumping in, for bumping into you? No, he was busy getting interviewed, oh. or, or actually he was busy interviewing, uh, don't know the guy's name, but the voice of Mario. Wait, was he being filmed by like a, a straight up film crew? Oh, there were, uh, I think, I think so. There were several film crew type cameras all around. Okay. So that means there's, Potentially footage on the internet <laughs> of Conan O'Brien interviewing somebody, and right behind him yeah. is Jason Murphy. Yeah, that's very possible. You guys find this shit on the internet. I want to see it. I want to put a big red arrow that says Jason Murphy on that video. That's very possible. But he stood there for a while. I interv- uh, or I, I I filmed him for a second talking, you know, cracking wise with the Mario guy, and um, and they were kind of like moving about the show floor. Okay. Um. And, it was uh, like a hot girl on spring break or on Mardi Gras type of thing, just a big, the, oh yeah, the circle of people all around them, with totally the, holding their cameras up in the air, exactly, and shit. yeah. And then there were you know people, you know, a couple of people dressed up like Mario and Luigi, and I left after that because it was quickly escalating. Um, <laughs> You're afraid that they were going to bust out the tridents pretty <laughs> yeah. soon. <laughs> Conan killed a guy. <laughs> um, and then they had this thing, and I can't wait to do this, but they had this booth, and while people were playing uh, little uh, uh, 3DS games, um, they have uh, Luigi on this screen. Mm-hmm. And you take a mic, and you talk to him, and somewhere in that booth, hidden, is someone doing Luigi's voice, mm-hmm. and it's animating as he talks back to you. Uh-huh. So, I want to I want to start some shit with Luigi. You need to go over there and ask him where Dory is. <laughs> where Dory is? You don't know about that. At, at Disney World, they have a similar thing with the uh, Crush the Turtle from uh, Finding Nemo. Okay, called uh, Crush's Turtle Talk. And yeah. if you ask him where Dory is, he'll bring out Dory real fast. Oh, <laughs> or, I'm, I'm going to tell him like Luigi. Seriously, grow a pair, all right? Yeah, you don't have to be second fiddle. Okay, wait, is this a TV? I mean, did he make you wear that green? Is it a TV screen with his face on it? Yeah, he, well, he's standing there, just whole body. Maybe okay. Maybe we can we can uh, if we, by the end of the day they get a little bit more lax in checking the badges. Maybe we can go get one of the homeless people from the streets of L.A. and and make them a fake badge and take them in there and tell them that that guy in the TV was talking shit about your mom, man. And yeah. it, watch a homeless guy get into a fight with Luigi on a yes. television. <laughs> this is the maybe the greatest idea you have ever had. Did we get that guy's number who kept calling me master? I don't think he has a phone. I could give him a whole pack of cigarettes for, for if he fights Luigi at the LA Convention Center. <laughs> oh, my God. I will give him my badge. I will say, go forth and fight the Italian stereotype. Yeah, except that then once again I've, I've been really trying to avoid us not ever being invited back to e3 ever again you you say the word when those restrictions are off i'll let you know make that happen i'll i'll let you i'll let you open up the box with all of the the poop and stuff in it so so this one uh is uh brief legend of zelda wind waker hd yeah how wind waker he was it it was wind waker and it was it was pretty but uh i didn't i didn't play it i watched someone play it because i've already played wind waker and it's like yep still on that goddamn boat Yep, that's enough. 
But it, it looked really good. And, and for comparison, they had the GameCube version next to it. And of course, it looked much better. So if you're a fan of that game, jump on it. I just, I got so sick of the boat sequences. Yep. There was just way too much of that. Yep. But it did look really pretty. Yep. Does it, is a, do they record, is it all, is there dialogue in there? Was there dialogue on the GameCube version? Uh, it's been so long, or was it just I like the boat remember. little thing would come up like, boop, 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 yeah, boop, I think boop, it was, boop. yeah, I think it was just text. Okay. Uh, and that was, that's a, a Wii U title, right? Uh, yes. And that, is that coming out this year? Do you know? I don't know. I think it is. Let's look it up. Uh, while you watched it for about five minutes and I was like, Yep, that's what I thought it was. So you're saying that the Wind Waker HD was an awful lot like uh, the Wind Waker? It was. Very much so, actually. Surprisingly so. Okay. All right. Uh, graphical updates. We use gamepad. Yada, 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 yada. Let's see. I bet the release date is up here. Boop, 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 boop. boop. October of 2013. Oh, yes. When everything is coming out. When every game... Everything. You guys, I hope that you don't like Halloween too much because you're going to be playing video games, motherfucker. There's wow! Shit coming out. Wind Waker came out in 2002. Yep, that's a long time ago. Yep. Well, that's Japan. Yeah. They came out in North America until 2003. Oh, well, <laughs> still ten years ago. Yep. Uh, all right. Well, from there, let's. Uh, I got one thing that I booked out of the Namco Bandai appointment to come down and mess around, and I took a minute and sat down and played uh, Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Dual Destinies okay. on the 3DS. Is he Daredevil? No. Mm. All right. What well, are you talking about? Well, he's a lawyer. Uh huh. Thought oh. maybe he's a daredevil. No, he's and Phoenix Wright. That's disappointing. He's the star of the greatest video game movie ever made. Phoenix really? Wright as attorney. Is it a good movie? Um, it's not a good movie. <laughs> it's the greatest video game. It's the best adaptation of a video game because it's pretty much exactly the first Phoenix Wright video game. Okay. So the thing is that I'm a big fan. I played Phoenix Wright 1 and 2, and then I kind of dropped off the series. Sure. Now, this is the one... I've never played them. W- 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 yeah. Lawyer RPG. Mm. You know what the, you know what they are, though. Yeah. Objection. You yeah, know, all that exactly. stuff. Um, but this is the one that's not actually going to be released on a cart in North America. You can only buy it through the store. Okay. And with Nintendo's policies about, like, if your 3DS breaks... Go fuck yourself. Um, <laughs> That's in the end user license agreement, actually. Right. It's, it's a really shitty proposition because, like, for the, you know, you talk about Xbox Live or the PlayStation Network or even Steam or something like that. You're like, well, what if I, I can't buy a box copy? What if I buy it and then my computer, or I lose the disc or something? Or my computer breaks and you go, well, then just reinstall it off the service. You install Steam or boot up XBLA and download it again. But Nintendo's policy, if you have a 3DS, and it breaks is the game is tethered to that 3DS mm-hmm. and they will tell you go buy it again. Yeah. Which sucks because this shit's hella fun, yo. Really? I, well, if you're into Phoenix Wright. Uh, the biggest thing that I've seen here and I did not know this because I've been following this very closely is that this is the first time, at least that I can tell, that the series is all in 3D. So Phoenix Wright in the courtroom is now fully animated. It's not just switching between 2D. It's all 3D. Uh, Ghost Trick well, another one of the, the games from this company had some 3D stuff going on in the background that was cell shaded. But this, like, all the characters are moving and blinking, and like when they have the courtroom murmuring, they have these like 360 degree shots. Um, it's very much like a Phoenix Wright game. You're you're playing Phoenix Wright again, which after the Apollo Justice stuff, you're back to Phoenix Wright. They had a little, very short little court case where you just point out the inconsistency in the this one guy's testimony, and then you go over to another person's testimony. You use this new system where you can. Uh, like have somebody do testimony and then you look at the, the four emotions, happy, sad, angry, and surprised. And during each part of their testimony, you can see if they have like a rogue emotion and then you can press them and be like, now you said the building was falling on your head. Why were you happy that the building was falling on your head? And they go, oh, I forgot. My boyfriend was there and he was saving me from the building and that's why I was happy. You go, oh, okay. And that changes the way the, the stuff goes. But without yammering on for too long, this is just a Phoenix Wright game. It looks like a really pretty, really pretty Phoenix Wright game. I think it's probably going to be pretty cool when it comes out. I did not see any sign that this game had been jacked up in any way, shape, okay. or form. It's still a lawyer game where you do lawyer stuff. Yeah. Now let me see how much time I got left here because next up on the list. All right. Next up on the list is going to take up the next hour. Tell you what. Why don't you? Talk about, uh, some of these. And okay. Okay. We'll close out. Either that or I could, I could, you know what? Let me talk about this one because we're just going to, we're going to skip over Dark Souls and we're going to start the next episode with that. But let me talk real fast about these next two that I saw at the Square Book Do it. booth because they tie directly into your Wind Waker 
experience. Oh, yeah. So I saw Final Fantasy X as X slash X2 in HD. Yeah. Uh, it's Final Fantasy X, but in HD mm-hmm. on the PlayStation 3. I can't be the only one who just does, uh, does not understand these naming conventions, the Final Fantasies. It's, it's I, I can't, maybe it's because I, I don't play them. I'm just wholly you're, unfamiliar with. Yeah, you're you're um, the confusion that a lot of people have is um, it's really not that difficult. Like Final Fantasy, every Final Fantasy series takes place in a brand new world, right? Yeah. See so Final Fantasy X. Mm-hmm. Final Fantasy X two was a direct sequel to the events that took place in the same world with the same characters. Yeah. So that's why it's X two. Yeah. Okay. That's why you have Final Fantasy thirteen, Final Fantasy thirteen two, but then. The other one that I saw, Final Fantasy Lightning Returns, Final Fantasy XIII, should technically be called Final Fantasy XIII. Three. You know what? It's all jacked up. Once you get past, okay. once you get past about five, you shouldn't be, um, you shouldn't be naming your game sequential numbers anymore. <laughs> right. You should just reboot your series or whatever. Or just have I, colon subtitle. Right. Exactly. Um. Anyway, I saw that. I saw. So it was basically Final Fantasy X. It was the beginning of Final Fantasy X. They've up the textures. They may mm-hmm. have made some slight changes. It doesn't look that much different. Yeah. I also looked at the Kingdom Hearts 1.5 HD, which is Kingdom Hearts... Let me make sure I get this right, because I don't want you guys to, to, to be pissed off at me. This is Kingdom Hearts Final Mix and Re-Chain of Memories, which, if I'm not mistaken, was a DS game. Uh, I don't know. Uh... Chain of Memories was remade for the PlayStation 2. Okay. Yes. Um, apparently there was a DS or three or Game Boy Advance game that was remade for the PlayStation 2. Anyway, it's just like three different Kingdom Hearts games all being shoved together and up into HD and everything. Okay. They kept showing the trailer for it. Looks an awful lot like Kingdom Hearts. I think that um, when this comes out, it, it, which is very, very soon, it's in September... Um, this might be an opportunity for me to maybe doodle around with the series because everybody keeps asking me about it, and I never even finished the first one. So sure. maybe go back and see if it doesn't completely blow my brain. It also has a, cin- a collection of HD remastered cinematic scenes from Kingdom Hearts 358 slash 2 days. What I played was very much just the beginning of Kingdom Hearts 1, where Sora and Riku, I guess, are running around on some island, and it was like, this looks like a really pretty version of Kingdom Hearts that I remember. They were showing the trailer in like IMAX or whatever in the square booth. You saw that giant screen yeah, in the square. Massive. And it was super loud and they were yeah. just constantly playing trailers on it. I saw the trailer like four times. It looks I was like trying to play Saints Row. Yeah. You kept hearing goofy and shit yeah. behind uh-huh. you. Yeah. So yeah, I saw those. That really tie that that kind of ties in with your Legend of Zelda experience. So why don't you talk a little bit about some of the next stuff on your list, and we'll take a break. Okay, the next one I went up, and this is going to be like I've mentioned a couple of times before, was Dynasty Warriors 8. It was Dynasty Warriors. You pick your your officer yep. in your army, yep. and you've got like 10 to choose from, I think, and they all have different uh, abilities, uh, different weapons. And, of course, you level them up, and they all have you know different relationships with each other and what have you. Uh, and then you send them out onto the battlefield and uh, into this into what used to be really impressive with all of the people on this big battlefield. Uh huh. That stopped being impressive several years ago, though. Mm-hmm. And now they're just... I, I, I imagine they're continuing the story. I don't remember which ones I played, mm-hmm. but I didn't play them very much. And even the ones that I played back then, once the novelty of having all these people on the battlefield wore off, which was pretty quick, I lost interest. Um but yeah, that's, uh, that's exactly what it was. I played it for a few minutes, uh, and then actually it crashed. Oh, really? Yeah. Was it a console version or was it going on PC? It was a console version. Did, it, what did it do? Just lock up or? Yeah, it just locked, well, it said loading. Uh huh. And then it just sat there loading for a long, long time. Did it, okay, what you, what you played of it, um, did it, Look any better than you remember? Dynasty not, Warriors no, looking? no, it really didn't. Okay, it, maybe marginally it was, but the, it's not a big evolution in the graphics. I, I, it was on the, uh, uh, I think it was the PS3. Well, the last Dynasty Warriors that I put was Dynasty Warriors Seven, what, and what I found was uh, here, here's, I guess, the big question: was those big groups of dudes that are attacking you? Mm-hmm. Do they still just stand there like fucking assholes, waiting for you to kill them in like thirty in groups of thirty or forty? No, this they were all like rushing around. You know, there there were some standing off to the side, uh-huh. like waiting. But mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, it, it it was 
it was pretty frenetic, you know. Uh, not was really. Your, was it much of a challenge? Uh, not what I played. No. Okay. I mean, I started from the very beginning, and it was just. That's kind of been my problem. These guys who run towards you, you know. That's kind of been my problem with Dynasty Warriors for a while now. Has been that they that there's not really a, a huge amount of challenge to it, so it ends up just being like this drudge work of. It's less about defeating these enemies and more about just getting the fuck through this giant crowd to go get the point that you need right. to capture next right. type of thing. Um. Okay, so Dynasty Warriors eight second verse same as the first. Yes. Um, all right. Well, let's 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 end this one on a more positive note on yes. something more interesting. This is probably my favorite game of the festival thus far, and it's cliche to say it's I not know a festival, Jason. Fe- whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Uh, it's uh, and it, yeah, it's kind of cliche to say because it's totally anticipated, especially knowing my taste. But, right. Uh, um, I went into uh, a, a single player demonstration of Assassin's Creed for Black Flag. Tell me all about it. Uh, it was, uh, it was incredible. Yeah. I mean, they, they first showed, uh, the uh, trailer that they showed during the, the pre show uh, on Day Zero, uh, the Ubisoft thing the other day, where it was oh, the one with uh, the weird blocking so that it was very thin, right? Um, in the it didn't look like that, but, no? but that, that was the one. Oh, okay. it wasn't, okay. yeah, it looked, it looked fine. Uh, but, uh, yeah, they, uh, they had Kenway and he's hanging out at a basically pirate beach party with Blackbeard. Woo! And then they, uh, the, the traitor goes off into the, the, uh, jungle. Wait, was this pre-rendered or was somebody playing this? Oh, this was playing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it, it was, it, they, somebody had played it, but they recorded it. Oh, know? okay. Okay. Um, I guess this wasn't really a trailer. It was the segment of gameplay that it we was, saw. It was the stage demo, the PS4 that right. locked up. Uh, yes. Okay. Did you see any of that locking Not stuff at here? all. Okay. Not at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, but it did that where, you know, Kenway goes up through the jungle. He assassinates those guys. They send off a signal mm-hmm. and the Navy starts attacking the pirates. And then you switch over to, you get to your ship and then you have the big, uh, seafaring battle. Uh, Do you, uh, let me ask you a question. Do you get the, it, it was, it wasn't in, in, entirely clear to me, uh, during that demo. Did it seem like you could have stopped them from shooting that signal? Or was that pretty much a scripted, it was it hard, like a scripted event? It's hard to say, uh, because it played out just, it, I mean, it was the exact same thing that we saw the other night. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, but not, not, uh, it didn't lock up or anything. Okay. So it, I, I don't even know if someone was playing it while we were watching. It. Did they say if they're doing, was it, PS4, Xbox One. Did they identify uh, it was what PS4? Were? Okay. Yeah. And how did it look? Did it look better than AC3? It was. Go- oh yeah. Yeah. Fuck yeah. It was okay. gorgeous. It, it was just an amazing looking game. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, the, so then- the the second uh, part of it was like a 15 minute uh, demonstration of all of the free roam stuff that you can do, all of the side missions, the non story missions, and I actually learned a lot about the game from this. Um, <laughs> and, I mean, they are, and they made this very clear, the guy hosting it, uh, they're setting out to make like the ultimate pirate game. Yeah. I mean, so this isn't just an afterthought. <gasps> this is a fucking pirate game. Yay. Yeah. Oh, I love me some pirate games, man. Yeah. This is, I mean, they put a lot into it and what they wanted to do, he said, was show you the reality behind the fantasy of uh, pirates. They didn't mm-hmm. embellish. They didn't put a Kraken in there or yeah. ghost ships or anything. Yeah. Uh, he said these people lived outrageous over the top lives. Yeah. And, um, it's the land is huge. It's much bigger than any other Assassin's Creed game. Mm-hmm. It covers from like Florida to south of Cuba. Way south of Cuba, so it's kind of your typical you know, the the Spanish yeah. main kind of pirate yeah. area, yeah, West you Indies, get, yeah. Caribbean thing. Okay, uh, and then from like uh, Yucatan, Mexico, uh-huh. all the way over to like Jamaica, just like that whole area. And it's okay. huge. There are lots of islands, yeah. lots of stuff that you can see, and just go, oh, yeah. hey, here's a little island with a body. I'm going to search this body. Oh, and there's a pirate treasure map. And then you set a waypoint, which, of course, they made a point of pulling out smart glass. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wait, no. Why, how did they pull out smart glass? It was on the oh, PlayStation wait. 4. Wait. It wasn't smart. They didn't say smart glass. Uh-huh. It was an app. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, I'm sorry. It wasn't smart glass, but it was an, an app. It was basically smart glass. Okay. But um, it uh, they sit there and pulled up the Assassin's Creed map, and they're like, yeah, you can send your guys out from here to go do 
your your fleet to go do pirate missions you yes. know, in Europe or whatever. Yes, fleet. Uh, and then you'll have more money when you get back. Yay! Um, you can do it on the bus or whatever. But anyway, you find this treasure map. You set a waypoint. You go and you find all this shit on the island. You get to this island. You know, you'll travel through these storms. You have to be really careful mm-hmm. and steer carefully through the storms because some of your guys will fl- fall overboard, Whoa. and you need to keep your crew. Up. Right. Uh, and when you, uh, well, you can't just, you can't just duck your crew for, for laughs. Like, yeah. Hey, Joe, there's something fell over the right hand exactly. side. What? Yeah. <laughs> you, you want to make sure that you're keeping these guys safe because that makes boarding enemy ships easier, of course. Okay. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you go to this island and on the island, you're trying to find the, the, the treasure. Mm-hmm. Uh, but while you're there, you find, uh, a couple of, uh, Spanish soldiers and they've captured, uh, these two sailors and they're about to execute them. We have to sneak up on them and take out the Spanish soldiers. And then you can draft those guys like, Hey, yeah, you can come be on my crew. Um, oh my God. It's like yeah. Assassin's Creed married Sid Meier's pirates and had yeah. a baby. Oh man. Yeah. And, uh, and I'm in the- love with that baby, like just in twilight <laughs> and shit. <laughs> you pull out the spyglass. Uh, and you can see ships like you, we, uh, we came across, uh, the British fighting, uh, a British ship fighting a Spanish ship. And you can sit there and pull out your spyglass, and when you check these ships out, it tells you what loot they have on board. What? So if you want that, you go disable the ship and you board them, and you can, you can, you can, uh, you what can, was it? You can conscript their, uh, crew if once you conquer them. Nice. You can conscript them or servitude. You can just add the ship to your fleet. Yes, that was all I was just about to ask if you could do. Or you can strip it for parts and repair your own ship. That is awesome too. Yeah. That's like what you do in Fallout 3, except you do it with guns. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, and then there was random stuff like, you know, you see whales and stuff like that. Nifty. And, and they, they. Ooh, there were whales in The Witcher 3 when you were driving your boat around too. I was like, ooh, a oh, whale. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the little things, they, just a little kind of Easter egg or not really an Easter egg, but a little bonus is that as you travel around, uh, your crew starts unlocking different pirate shanties and you can just hit a little command and make them sing. And they're like actual shanties. What? And so it's like the more they have, the more options you have for them to sing. Nice. <laughs> so, That's yeah. Fucking... Yeah. Uh... But it's like you would use the spyglass and look at this ship, and it's like, oh, they've got rum and sugar. Oh, and this one has wood and uh, gunpowder or whatever. I don't remember exactly what it was. but Two days before Halloween, this bullshit comes out. Yeah. Like, I just... Uh, yeah, fuck, fuck Halloween. Halloween. Yeah, I know. I want to be a pirate, matey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it, it was, uh, yeah, and then they had the synchronization, of course. And, okay. Uh, Did they talk about dumb, uh, j- uh, I don't, why can we not remember this? I right don't now? know. This is, uh, yeah. Um, this is that, the Jack, Desmond. Desmond, there no, you go. No, he did not come up at all. Or John Delancey. That. There was a little thing that popped up and it was like Animus something unlocked or whatever. Uh-huh. Uh, but, so now you that, see that, that nobody brought it up in the presentation, so yeah. now that he's uh, possessed by space bitches, they just want to, yeah. you know, the 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 dumbasses who run this assassin group that Desmond works for, they have the same solution to every problem. Yeah. Throw them in the animus. Yeah. Like, oh man, I had so many tacos last night. Just get in the animus. Yeah. Get in the animus. We'll figure it out. And they brought the uh, pigeon coop back from Brotherhood. Cool. Um, did, the, did the bombs back? The bombs. Uh, no bombs. I don't know. Did, we didn't get to that, but uh, uh, we, you know, got the uh, the assassin mission from the pigeon coop, mm-hmm. uh, and we're in this little West Indies shanty village. And you have to kill these two British officers, mm-hmm. and so you go tracking them down. And use your eagle eye vision to spot them. And at one point, you walk up to the tavern. And this is something near and dear to my heart. A lot of the action, being being that it's a pirate game, is mm-hmm. around the tavern. There you go. Uh, and there was this British officer there, and uh, you're. You're just kind of pretending to order a drink at the bar, and he walks up next to you, and you just smashed his head into the bar and killed him with your bare hands. And his comrade runs off uh-huh. in the other direction, and the guy was chasing him, and you pull out your gun, and it's got a free-aiming gun now. Cool. So it's not like one of those automatic lock-on shot things like has been done with the, the sleeve pistol. Right, right, right. You know? yeah. um, we could have gunned him down, but they were like, nope. We're going to let him get on a ship so we can give chase. So he gets on a ship and then you get on yours and you just start chasing him through, uh, you know, the open sea, through the open sea. Oh, how's the soundtrack? Uh, how's the soundtrack? I don't remember the soundtrack. Oh, okay. I'm just going to play the Pirates of the Caribbean soundtrack the entire time. (laughs) Everything, uh, folks, I don't know if you know this, but everything in this world from washing dishes to walking your dog is so much more epic if you just put the goddamn Pirates of the Caribbean soundtrack (laughs) on. But yeah, this game looks amazing. It's gorgeous. It looks like fun, you know, and it, it, uh, it, it seems like there's going to be a lot to do. And, and, And again, it's, it's a huge area. Cool. Well, that sounds like something that I am, you know, 
I th- I've thought about it today more than any other day. How like I'm real envious of the fact that, or I'm uh, some da- some da- times I'm pissed off that you're here with me because it means that I have to let you go see some <laughs> of the really good games. And I can't be like, well, I have to see Assassin's Creed 4. Yeah. You go do all of the Disney stuff. Yeah, first you hit Nintendo, then go to Disney, then go over to uh, the Prima Game Guide booth and interview yeah. everybody over there. Go hang out at Brady Games. <laughs> <laughs> all right, folks. Well, check back later on because we're going to have part two where we have, oh, my God, so many games left to talk about. Yeah. We may end up with a part three on this one, but awesome. um RageSelect.com is the website. This, If you're seeing this on YouTube, check out RageSelect.com. Uh, please, for the love of God, we've got trailers. We've got uh, the, the Let's Plays. I'm sorry. I'm so fucking tired right now. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> we're going to come back. We're going to talk about Dark Souls 2. I'll give you, let's give him a little, a little taste. We're going to talk about Dark Souls 2. I got to see Thief today. Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles. Call, Call of, of Duty. Duty. Castlevania. Plants and Zombies. All sorts of stuff. All sorts of stuff.